Question 4. Figure 6 shows data for the variation of the power output of a photovoltaic cell with load resistance. So power, load resistance. The data were obtained by placing the cell in sunlight. The intensity of the energy from the sun instant upon the surface of the cell was constant. Use data from figure 6 to calculate the current in the load at peak power. So to do that, we need to find out where peak power is. So place your ruler like this, put it on the peak, and draw along there. And we need the resistance at that as well. So to me, that looks like it's exactly halfway between there and there. So that's 300. And that is, uh, each of these boxes is four, isn't it? So that's 108 or 0 0.108 watts because that's in milliwatts. Right, we need a, an equation. So peak power is equal to 0 0.108 watts at 300 ohm load. So if we use P is equal to I squared R, we get I squared is equal to P divided by R, which is equal to, the power is 0 0.108 divided by the load, which is 300. So that gives you 0 0.108 divided by 300 gives you that, 3.6 times 10 to the minus 4, and we need to square root that in order to get the answer for i, so i is equal to 0 0.01897 dot dot dot, which is equal to what have we got here, 3SF, 2SF, I'll put it to 2SF, 0 0.1897. 0.19 amps or 19 milliamps. The intensity of the sun's radiation incident upon the cell is 730 watts per meter square. The active area of the cell has dimensions 60 millimeters by 60 millimeters. Okay, so when we meet this in the question, first thing to do straight away is to convert these into meters. So that's 0.060 and 0.06 not there as well. Cal and that's in meters. Calculate the peak power, the ratio, the electrical energy delivered by the cell to the electrical energy arriving at the cell from the sun. So we need to find out how much of this hits our cell considering these are its dimensions. So first of all we need the area of the cell, which is going to equal just this times this, so 0 0.06 times by 0 0.06, put my proper significant figures on there. So that is 0 0.06 to the power 2, which is equal to 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3, and the units there, meters times meters, so it's meters squared. Right, so the power hitting the cell is the power delivered by the sun per meter squared times by the number of meter squareds of the cells that we have, which is this many. So it's going to equal 730 times by this number, so 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3, times that by 730. And we get 2.628, and the units will be watts. Okay, so the ratio is going to equal our peak power there, which is 108 milliwatts, so 0 0.108 watts, divided by the amount that arrives there, which is 2.628, and that's every second. So the the fact that it's in watts is 
and power is fine um, because each second the electrical energy will be equal to that in joules and each second the energy arriving will be equal to that in joules so that's absolutely fine so we can do 0 0.108 divided by previous answer gives us a ratio of 0 0.4 109 so to 2SF 0.0412 SF and it has no units because it's a ratio so the units on the top and bottom cancel you can write that just to prove to the examiner that we know how to do that next question 4 part 3 the average wavelength of light incident upon the cell is 500 nanometers. Estimate the number of photons incident upon the active area of the cell every second. Okay, so this is a little bit of a sillily worded question. What they're really asking you to do is to find out if you have photons of that much wavelength, how many do you need to develop that much power every second? Okay, so each second Two point six two eight joules arrive at the cell. So light energy from the sun is coming in and that much hits because that's how many watts there are, so that much hits every single second. Right, we need to find the energy of a single photon now. So the energy of one photon of 500 nanometers is given by this equation E is equal to HF. We don't know the frequency but we do know the wavelength so we need to use um, C is equal to F lambda so F is equal to C divided by lambda so put that into there and we get HC over lambda. So H is Planck's constant on your formula sheet there, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Um, C is speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. And we need to divide that by the wavelength, which is there. So that's 500 nanometers is times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, so we do that calculation. So 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times by 3.00 times 10 to the 8. And we divide that by 500 times 10 to the minus 9. And we get an answer of 3.978 times 10 to the minus 19. And that's in joules. Okay. So we have this much energy arriving each second. Each photon has this much energy. Each 500 nanometer photon has this much energy. So to work out the total number of photons, we take that and we need to divide by the energy of each photon. So the number of photons is equal to the total energy. So that's 2.628 divided by this number here, 3.9. 978, which is the energy of each photon, 10 to the minus 19. So I want to do 2.628 divided by answer, and it's going to be quite a big number, 6.60633 times 10 to the 18, which is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 18, the two significant figures. There we go. That's question four. Question four, part four. The measurements in the data in figure six were carried out when the rays of the sun were incident at 90 degrees to the surface of the panel. A householder wants to generate electrical energy using a number of solar panels to produce a particular power output. Identify two pieces of information that the scientist could provide to inform the production of a suitable system. So there are lots and lots of different things that you can say here. Um, Notice that this graph depends upon load resistance, so he'll need to know the load resistance of whatever it is that he's going to um, 
to connect to it. So, um, sorry, I've assumed it's a he. I think it's say she instead. She needs to know the load resistance of whatever she intends to drive. And this is the amount of energy when you have a particular amount of sunshine, but if there are clouds and things like that, it could change that. So she will need to know the average um, level of uh, sun power incident on the house, e.g. clouds. Yeah, all that sort of thing that could affect it. Um, other ones you could say are the angle of the roof and how that's going to be uh, corresponding to the position of the sun. So if you've got the, the roof there like so and the sun is down here, then it's not going to hit at 90 degrees. Um, you could also say the um, the compass heading of the roof that she intends to put it on because you want in the northern hemisphere to put your solar panels on south facing roofs. Okay, so that is the end of question four. There are lots of different answers that you could say for that one.